<laughs> we'll be robbing motherfuckers outside after the show. No, I'm just joking. I only got one glove anyway. <laughs> Learned that from OJ. It's more intimidating that way. They don't know whether you had a garden, possibility of anything. But I tell you what, school of OJ, y'all better take notes. Tiger would have never had these problems if he was just went through the school of OJ, right? All right, we just buried him in the backyard somewhere, stabbed up a couple times, everything would have been fine, right? <laughs> I mean, really, think about it. He, now he has to hold press conferences, apologizing in front of his mother. Guys, could you imagine next time you cheated on your mom, you had to apologize in front of your mother? <laughs> like, you know, I, 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 let, I let everybody down. I'm sorry. Your woman's standing there behind you. Hey, tell him about the other girl. You know the other girl. Don't forget. I remember all of them. All three of them. You know? That would be hard on us. And guys, we can't, we can't allow that to happen. We can't let these women... Sit here and have these guys hold the press conferences and things like that, because that's how it starts. You know women, you give them an inch, they go one a mile. You start off letting Kobe and Tiger apologize, hold the press conferences. Sooner or later, all of us is going to have to hold press conferences. <laughs> we already got cheaters. Next is going to be apologizers. Next thing you know, it's going to be like, let's see how Dave talks his way out of this one at 10 p.m. <laughs> you know? It's crazy. Tiger Woods is a fucking billionaire, people. A billionaire. There. He should be able to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. He should be able to walk down Times Square right now with his caddy scratching his balls. You know why? Because he's fucking rich. The same rules don't apply to him. You understand? It's like, if I was with Oprah, I don't give a fuck. She can fuck. Stedman, Gail, who the fuck ever she wants to fuck. As long as she bring it down and pay home to me, we won't have no problems at all. Maybe I'm just a simple man. You know, I see a lot of friendly faces in the crowd, a lot of white faces. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> Trying to get me some more white friends. I don't know if you guys heard about this a couple months back. Young guy was driving home on Sakonic Highway, crashes a couple miles off the road. Nobody knows where he's at. His friends, they go looking for him. They go to the police station, they go to the news, the news comes to their house, they have maps laid out on the table, highlighters, soul shakers, as mile markers, last seen here. We're gonna find this guy. Guess what? They found him. Same situation when you black. Yo, you seen Teddy the other day? I ain't seen that motherfucker in a minute. He done fucked around, guys ass locked up again, didn't he? <laughs> Told that motherfucker pay that child support, that bitch is crazy. <laughs> no? We lost a great recently. That's right, talking about Gary Coleman. Damn. Sad story, sad story. I mean, when you think about it, I don't know how many of y'all see those pictures. National Enquirer. His wife all posing over his dead body and shit. It's <laughs> life. She pulled the plug so quick. It made me wonder what would make somebody pull the plug on somebody that quick? What would what, what possess a woman to do that? Then I really started thinking about it. Gary Coleman was a washed up 80s icon turned security guard. Do you know how miserable it must have been to live with that man? Every time you turn around, who's talking about Willis? Who's talking about Willis? Like Gary, you were 10 years old. You're 40 fucking two, get over it. Enough already. You know, and, and, and then you living with a security guard. Could you imagine what it's like living with a security guard in the middle of the night? He hear a noise. What's that? I know I heard something. I'm gonna check it out, baby. I'm gonna check it out. Who the fuck is that? Who's there? Who's there? Who are you? Hey! No running! No running! That's how more guys do. <laughs> you know? Before I get out of here, just wanna say, fuck Mel Gibson. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that one. Don't you? It's true. He done offended three groups, three groups of people. This was baseball, he'd be out. <laughs> you know? I, I really couldn't believe it was him when I first heard it. You know, I thought he was acting. I'm gonna burn down the house, but first you're gonna blow me. I was like, wow, I gotta see that movie. That sounds like... <laughs> Just saying. Burn it down before you blow me. You know? And then, what else he said? Oh, get raped by a pack of niggas. Let me tell y'all something, especially you white women. 
<laughs> Niggas don't rape in packs. It's too much pussy to shit. Um, and um, before I get out of here real quick, just want to let y'all know, uh, oh, I spoke to my father earlier today, said to him, I said, yo, I'm performing at the New York Comedy Club tonight. He said, really? Performing what? I said, oh, I'm sorry. Kind of figured the name was self-explanatory. But um, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing um, <laughs> you know, uh, how much the cigarettes now? How are they going for? Thirteen dollars. Thirteen dollars. Eleven dollars a pack. It was crap box space. You don't have to shush for that part. But um, that's why I'm just storing cigarettes in my basement. I don't even smoke them. I'm just storing them. Not by the pack, but by the carton. You know why? Sooner or later, people gonna start fucking for cigarettes. That's right. Sooner or later, you're just gonna be able to walk up to a girl at the bar like. Outside. I got a couple hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> and then guess what? Guess who's going to be getting all the pussy in, fellas? Me and that little fat ass two year old Indonesia kid on the internet. <laughs> That's right. Me and him, we're going to be enjoying it up. But, you know, I don't, I don't do cigarettes. Weed smoker. Average weed smoker. You know? And what, what, what really kills me. It's alright, I saw you. It's, what, what, really, what really kills me about it. Is the fact that these commercials that they come up with, they make no sense. You know? At least with cigarettes, they got truth.com. They, they give you facts, show you people, I smoke for 30 gas, and that's what happens. And you know, that's the truth. But with weed commercials, they tell you stupid shit. Shit that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like your dog's gonna talk to you once you start getting hot. If your dog starts talking to you, you are Dr. Doodle. It is time to cash in. <laughs> But, you know, they should really show the truth. That's what people really want to see, the truth. Show them the truth. Show them me, 3 o'clock in the morning, in my basement watching The Lion King. <laughs> <sighs> in the jungle, the mighty jungle. <laughs> Lion King's the shit, son. <laughs> That's my time. My name is Bernard Blake. Thank you.